Hello quilters. Um, I have been showing you how to prepare and mark and measure and plan for your binding on your quilt project. Um, I've already showed you how to figure how much you need, figured it showed you how to cut it. So now I'm at the point of how you're going to connect these strips to make one long continuous strip. I'm going to show you on these samples. What I've done is I've got my two strip, I've got two strips here. I'm going to put them together, right sides together, and don't use those salvages. And then I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to go from this point to this point where they meet and make a 45 degree angle. You can put a pin in there if you want. I will for the sake of showing you. And then you can put it under your machine and you're going to stitch on that line making a bias connection. Now you keep doing this with all your strips. You take this next one, which is your next, put that right side up, add the next one, and again, don't put in your salvages. And I don't bother with this, but I'm going to show you to go to put a line again and then you can pin and then again you put another one under and you just keep doing this and keep going until you've got all your strips together with a bias on the bias when you're done take them out cut them apart like so you take this tag off here Cut this back to a quarter inch, like so, and let me do the other one just to show you, and get those extra threads off there too. You don't want them threads in your quilt. Quarter inch, and off it goes. So you now have a continuous bias, and you do this with all your bias that you need. You take it to your ironing board. You fold it in half, the whole width, folding it, pressing, folding and pressing. Press this to one way, whichever way you're comfortable with, doesn't matter. And then keep folding, keep pressing until you're all done. Go ahead and finish this for you. This is just a sample to show you how to do it. Then we're going to move to a quilt that I'm almost done with. And I can show you how to finish. So there you have your bias binding. Now if you're not ready to use it, I usually just take and fold it. Some people put it around paper towel rolls so it doesn't get wrinkled. You can store it however you want until you're ready to use it. But there you have your bias binding. So now you're going to take and attach it to your finished quilt, quilt top. Move this stuff out. I like to keep my area clean. For this part of it, you're going to need what I call a measuring gauge. It has your different gauges on it. You can use your quarter inch ruler if you have a quarter inch on it like this. You can use that. You're going to need a walking foot. A walking foot, this attaches to your needle screw on your machine and then it brings both fabrics, it moves both fabrics at the same time under the feed dogs. I've already got one on my machine. So this quilt I've pretty well done with. I've already started it. You just add that binding. Where am I? Right here. You add that binding to the end of your quilt with a quarter inch Make sure everything is together right. And I gotta. And then you're gonna have a corner. Let me get this knotted on here so I don't lose it because I did take it out. There we go. Now, when you come to this corner of the quilt, which this is just a little table runner to show you, I'm gonna use my quarter inch marker and a straight pin. I'm gonna take my quarter inch. Put it right here. That's the quarter inch mark. Oh, luckily the 
trim has it too so I know I gotta stop right there I'm not gonna stitch over it I'm gonna stitch to it and I'm gonna come right along here quarter inch stitch all the way over here and you need your machine to be needled down and I'm going to stop right at my needle and pull the needle out the pin you're going to turn 45 degree use that you're going to turn it 35 degree because you're going to start coming down this way what you do now you put your presser foot back down and you back stitch right off the quilt right off the quilt as far back as you need to go now this is the tricky part you're going to take your end and you're going to put a 45 degree angle to here going back to your stitches and fold it just like that and you've got a 45 degree flap right there you're going to bring this back down to the side that you're turning to and stitch right back over those stitches coming right back in you're going to have to stop and kind of walk it over you don't want to distort this at this point. Oop, got a little caught there. And there you go. You're going to put a quarter inch on this side all the way down. Let me go down to the next corner and I will show you again just so you make sure you've got it. Then as soon as I get show you this next corner show you how I end my quilt. My machine is dancing. It's dancing right away from me. Okay, so we're coming to our next corner here. I have my gauge, the ruler, whatever. Mark a quarter inch off this side. And there you go. And there is my stopping point. Make sure your needle is down. And you stitch right over to it. Do not stitch past it. Walk it in if you need to. There we go. Okay, again, we're going to lift the presser bar. Turn it. So you're ready to go down this side. And back stitch off. Again, you're going to pick this up, put a 45 degree, you're going to come straight over and line it up with where you just were, and line it up with where you're going to go. So you're straight on both sides, and stitch right back in. Stay on those stitches, pick it up and walk it through if you need to, that one I didn't need to. And then just go on down. Now when you start, I need to tell you when you start your binding, I'm go back here. I'm going to go as far as I need to. I put two pins in to tell me where to stop. And this is kind of backwards. I should have showed you before. I'm going to back stitch it so I don't lose any of this and remove those pins. But when you start, you pick your place to start. I like to use a long edge leave about a 12 inch tail and then start stitching and go all the way around doing your corners then come around and like I did I put two pins to make sure I stop just to remind myself to stop at that point you remove your quilt take it out cut your threads and lay it out flat and what you're going to do is you're going to pin this one about halfway between these two. What we're going to do is we're going to attach these seamlessly. So, what I like to make sure is I've got a little bit of it. I'm going to cut it off at this point. Let's see. Yeah, I'll cut it off right about there. It's all guesswork at this point, whatever you're comfortable with doing. And then I'm going to put a pin right there. Oh, got two of them. I'm going to put a pin to hold that in place. Then I'm going to bring the other side 
that I just finished. I'm going to bring that right over the top. Now at this point you have to remember what you cut your binding at. And I cut mine at, well, I did one and a half. I don't do that very often. Let's see what I got here. Open it out. Nope, I did one and a quarter. So what I want to do from this point, from this needle over, I want to cut two and a quarter off it. So I'm going to put this at a quarter and I'm going to go here and it's just kind of guesswork. It's on the bias so it will give. And then you just cut that one right there. Discard the extra. So you've now got these the same size. You can take your pin out. And here's the trick, tricky part. You've got to be aware of what you're doing. I open up the right side. Turn it like that. Open up the left side. Turn it like that and pull them together at 45 degree angle. And then I like to put a pin or two in. Again, you're going to do that 45 degree that you did on your bias to attach them. I'm going to go from this point to this point. If you need to, you can put a line in there, but I don't usually. I just eyeball it. It's all bias. It's very forgiving. So I'm going to stitch whoops, a 45 degree angle over to the other corner. Taking your pins out. Whoops, I'm throwing them in the wrong box. There you go. It's done. Take it out. Trim off the edges. Then, before you cut anything off, you lay it flat and see how it looks. If it looks the way it should, you did right. Open it up and cut off your salvage. There you go. Now you put it back under the machine. It's exactly the way it should be. Let me get that thread. I do not like threads. I am fussy about the threads. I'm going to put it back under. Oops, my needle's down. And stitch it right down. Finish it off. Okay. I'm going to back stitch it so it don't come out. traveling again. And there we go. It's got a little bit of a give in it because it is biased. And knot it off. There we go. And I ran out of bobbin. Well, isn't that sweet? Huh. Okay. Oh, well, I ran out of bobbin, so it's not done. <laughs> you ran out of this. The bobbin's still there. Oh, yes it is. Okay. My thread broke. Alrighty. Well, you've got the idea of it. So then, once you cut them, I'm going to just show you real quick on a one corner. You're going to cut back to your quarter inch, like so. And then let me cut this corner here where I was. And then when you, however you close it, you can take, fold it over like this, bring this side over, and you have a perfect miter on the back side, and you have perfect miter on the front. So that is how to do your binding. One way to do. There's many more ways, but that's the way I do mine. And then I like to hand stitch. That's my reward when I'm all done. I love to sit down and feel the fabric and iron it, or hand sew it. But there you go. Happy quilting.